We'll start by coming over here to sketch. I'm going to click on it and we're going to create a sketch here on this face. Now I'm going to come over here to the center point circle. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to create a circle here on this face. Once I create it, I'm going to select this front plane or possibly the right plane, depending on how you modeled it. I'm going to select that plane. I'm going to select the center point holding down shift. And we're going to come over here to coincident. And when I click on coincident, it's going to mate that front plane to this point. That means that if I move the point, move the circle up and down, that middle point is always connected to the plane. With that connected, we're going to hit OK. And I'm going to come over here to plane. We're going to click on this face. We're going to drag out a plane and hit OK. And on this plane, I'm going to select it, create a sketch. I'm going to click here on the view cube to look right at where we're working. I'm going to select a center point rectangle. I'm going to select a center point and drag out. I'm going to hit OK. So now I have a circle here and I have a square here. We're going to come over here to loft. Click on loft and I'm going to select this circle and I'm going to select a square and you're going to see that it lofts between these two shapes. And that's what a loft looks like. Now Notice we have start profile condition and we have end profile condition. If I change this to be normal to profile, you can see that the profile of the loft shifts. So I can make this tangent to profile and it's influencing the shape. I can make it match tangent and I can keep selecting the options and we could see how it's going to compute that shape. And some of them actually don't compute these ones at the end. You'll also notice that there's an end profile condition. And that's because the start and the end, you know, that was option one and option two we selected. That's how it knows the start and the end. And we can change these as well. I can make this normal to profile. I can make it tangent to profile. So I kind of like how it looks now. And I'm just going to hit OK. But there's so much more that we can do with lofts. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sketch here on the front plane. So I'm going to start by deleting the loft. Come here, create a sketch on the front plane. What I want to do is I want to create a spline. And that spline, I'm just going to confirm it. And we're going to select the endpoint of one spline. I'm going to select the top line of the square. And we want to click here, pierce. So what it just did is it pierced. It's not coincident. It's pierce. It's, it's a different option, but they basically do the same thing. It pierces the point of that spline to the line of the square. Very important. And we want to do the same thing here on the other side. I'm going to click on this point and I'm going to click on the circle, of course, holding down shift so I could select them both. And I'm going to select pierce. And now they're connected. What we want to do is hit OK. And we're going to try the loft again. I'm going to select a circle and then I'm going to select a square. I also want to create a guide. So I'm going to click on guide and I'm going to select that spline. And as you could see, the spline is influencing the shape. And we can, of course, change our profile. And you can see how all of these different things together affect each other. So we're going to hit OK. Now we're going to come over here to sketch. And I'm going to create a sketch this time on this face. And I'm going to click on inscribed polygon. I'll create a polygon. Now we're going to do the same thing we did before. I'm going to click on that center point. I'm going to hold down shift, select whichever plane is crossing through. For me, it's the right plane. And we're going to click on coincident just like before. As I move my shape around, you can see that that center point is always coincident with that plane. Hit OK. And we're going to create another sketch. I'm going to click here on the right plane and I'm going to come and click sketch and we're going to make it a three point arc. This three point arc is going to be right here on that center of the inscribed polygon. I'm going to drag it out and we'll make it something like this and hit OK. And so now we have our shape and we have our curve coming out of it perpendicular to it. What we want to do is come over here to sweep 
and we're going to click on the shape and then we're going to click on the sweep path and with that selected you can see that it is sweeping this shape across that path it's sweeping it through the path i should say it's sweeping it through the path so that the shape is following the path that shape is perpendicular to the path let me show you what I mean. I can make this keep or keep profile orientation and you're going to notice that it's changing it so that the face is always the orientation of where it started. But if you make it none, then it follows that path and that changes that orientation as it goes along. We're going to hit OK. We want to come over here and click on thicken and I can select this top face and you're going to see that it thickens that top face. If I change the value and make it, say, 7 millimeters, it will make it larger. It can make it smaller. We'll hit OK. Now we're going to come here to where it says Linear Pattern. We're going to select the down arrow, and we're going to select Circular Pattern. I want to select just this feature, the sweep that we just made, but it's trying to select the entire part. There's a reason for this. We're going to right-click here on our sweep, and click edit instead of making this an add to add it to the rest of the part we're going to click new and now when I hit OK you're going to see that it's a new part now the thicken as well we're going to right click we're going to hit edit and we're also going to make it new and I'm going to hit OK so now we have three different bodies we have this part body we have this part body and we have this part body. I'm going to come back to circular pattern. And this time when we do it, I'm going to select these two bodies. And for the axis pattern, I'm going to select um, our knob here at the top. And we can add more instances. I can make this six or I can make this eight. We could add as many as we want. And we can also, if we don't want to have them crossing over our loft here, I can come to skip instances and I can select these little points to take away instances that I don't want to be created. So that is the circular pattern tool. We're going to hit OK. If we want to combine any of these solids together, all we have to do is select them from this list of bodies and we can right click and go to boolean and then choose union in order to unite all of them and hit OK. And now we have all of these solids as one part. Thanks for watching.